Hey YouTube, Network Waste Kid here, and today we're going to be discussing the CCIE security certification, and more specifically, we're going to be looking at the uh, lab and what that entails. For those that also already follow me on YouTube, you've probably been aware of the videos that have been posting around CCIE content for some time. Um, we can see here I've got a few CCMP slash CCIE security lab videos that I do and that's um, most of that's been in relation to the <coughs> CCMP security um, trying to prepare for the written but the content is also relevant for the CCIE security lab so thank you for those that are already subscribed and have been watching my videos the plan is to do more of these videos and this is partly why I'm doing this video today because I've now finished my studies for my master's degree uh, which has freed up more time for me to be able to go after the CCI security again so before I started my master's degree um, I passed the uh, step one if you like on, on your screen there so I passed the score exam which is essentially the, the CCI written uh, but it's done as the CCMP uh, security core um, now exam and and then I started university my, my plan was to try and see whether I could continue my CCIE security studies and also do my master's degree but that was very optimistic because um, the, the workload for my master's degree just didn't allow me to do that and uh, family commitments as well meant that I just didn't have enough time to commit to the CCIE uh, security so I kind of put that on the back burner while I got through my master's degree and now I'm back to finish step two essentially which is take, taking the CCIE security lab um, as many of you will, will probably know. Um, so what I've been doing over the last few days is kind of trying to devise a plan um, to go through the blueprint topics and make sure that I can uh, comfortably configure and understand um, each of the, the topics that uh, that's, that's required uh, to, to pass the CCI security um, exam. So I kind of come back to the uh, Cisco Learning Network and uh, what I did is I uh, quickly looked under the um, exam topics. I'll just load that up there. And we can see we've got five different sections and we have the ability to also download that as a PDF. If you are going for the CCI security as well or any CCIE, the format is in, in terms of the blueprint topics, um, you know, being able to download them, that is, uh, is, is the same here. So you should be able to download it uh, via PDF. So I, I strongly recommend that anyone go for the CCIE, download the PDF and print that off so that you've got that and you can refer to that uh, when you are studying. So back to this, there's five sections as we can see here. And we've got weightings for each section now what that essentially means is the sort of emphasis that's going to be placed on each of these sections within the uh, within the exam so we can see that we've got um, we'll start off with perimeter security and intrusion prevention so we can see that this section is weighted at around 20 percent and we cover um, the Cisco ASA still that's in there still very uh, prominent out there in, in networks we have the Cisco FTD Firepower, um, so we, we've essentially got both of those in there and that's covering different um, aspects. Uh, basically all 1.0 section is, is looking at different aspects of the ASA and the uh, Firepower uh, in regards to configuration and you've also got some iOS um, elements in there as well. And then if we look at uh, section two, we also have 
uh, another 20% there and this is everything related to um, essentially VPNs um, and then you've got a little bit of um, I see MacSec here, you've got a little bit of MacSec in there as well uh, and this is in relation to uh, again the Cisco ASA the FTD and also um, Cisco routers as well so when we look at section 3 uh, we're looking at infrastructure security which is 15% weighting and it looks like this section focuses on uh, device hardening so control plane management plane features as we can see here data plane features we've got some layer 2 security elements in here wireless technologies uh, we've got some monitoring protocols so your streamer will be looking at firepower for example and then we've got some compliance uh, policies procedures and standards so we've got the ISO 27001 RFCs and PCI DSS to look at in that section if we look at section 4 we're looking at identity management information exchange and access control so you probably guessed already we're probably going to be using a lot of ICE in here and looking at the features that ICE has to offer so you've got guest access BYOD we've got the integration um, with Active Directory LDAP etc we've got provisioning posture profiling uh, all on ice we've got the different authentication methods so each chaining we've got we'll, we'll probably go through EAP TLS uh, all the rest of the EAP um, authentication methods and then we've got uh, PX grid in there so integrating with the WSA ice uh, well ice is uh, is where we'll be enabling PX grid but we'll be integrating with WSA and the FMC uh, multi-factor authentication we'll also be looking at so we've got Cisco Duo in there as well and we can see that this section actually is, is weighted the most so it's 25% um, so there's, there's not much to be honest there's not much difference between all of them they're both um, close to equal and you know again it is obviously worth going through all the content for these sections it'd be silly not to but we can see identity and management um, has 25% so it's a big focus on this area and then we've got the last section 5 which is advanced threat protection and content security which is again 20% so we'll be looking at AMP for networks, AMP for endpoints um, AMP for content security so ESA and WSA uh, we also have the uh, what else have we got here so packet catches using span uh, remote span uh, we've got some umbrella stuff in there uh, web filtering application visibility control um, email security WCCP uh, which we'll probably be looking at um, to do with the uh, when we're looking at uh, redirection with the FTD ASA stuff um, we've got SSL decryption here so we'll be looking at the FTD WSA umbrella um, then we've got stealth watch elements in here and all the rest of the advanced threat solutions that Cisco has to offer so it's worth as I say going through all this content and that's obviously what I intend to do um, just before we kind of go to how I've broke it down and kind of how I'm going to tackle this um, I just want to point out that on this website there is other things that we can also look at there's you know the, the forum if you like uh, where discussions take place on here so this is um, really nice if you have questions that you would like answering um, from the Cisco moderators, community moderators or even others in general that are studying for the CCIE security um, there's also webinars and videos that are useful 
um, so you can see that we've got upcoming webinars here that are useful and then there's also different videos broken down into sections so there's very useful stuff on here and then if we look at additional resources again we've got some more useful stuff here so we've got um, the usual exam policies uh, probably one that is um, really useful is a learning matrix and we'll look at that a little bit after um, again the equipment list um, to you know build out your own lab and and, and try some of the uh, Cisco products and configuring those um, there's still a version 5 list on there for the CCIE security version 5 um, I don't know why that is um, but I probably won't be looking at that um, there's an overview of the, the new certifications and how that works and then just CCI security at a glance. So what I would say is probably these two links here uh, are probably very useful um, if you want to build out your lab and um, try set some sort of uh, method to tackling the content. So how have I done it? What's my plan um, to try and get through all this content and get my CCI security. So as most will know I already work for Cisco so I do get to work with a lot of these technologies on a, on a daily basis which is which is great. Um, however as you can imagine not all features are always used. Some features are probably used once and then not touched again for a while and, and, and so on and so forth. So regardless I need to go through the blueprint and um, you know cover each of the topics. So what you're looking at here on screen now is an Excel sheet that I've put together over the last few days and you'll see on the left hand side here under uh, A um, this is a list of all the topics that we've just been through and seen on the uh, Cisco website so the plan is to tackle um, each of these go through these and uh, as I go through them mark them as complete so I've got a little I've got the percentages that we've just been through here I've got a little comment section where I can add additional comments for myself little notes for myself if I need to if I need to revisit anything and um, I'll go over anything again or if there's additional links that might be useful. I also have a time spent in hours and the plan here is to uh, document the time that I spend on each of these sections. Now I have a target of trying to attempt well hopefully pass the CCI security within four months from now um, which is approximately, I think off the top of my head, it's around 144 days or somewhere around about there. Um, now, I've kind of devised a plan whereby I can study every night for approximately four hours and um, on the weekend for six to eight hours. And by doing so, I will have gone through all this content or spent enough time I believe on on these topics uh, to at least give me a good chance of, of passing the CCI security so again the plan is here to document my time and you know some sections it might be that I need a little bit more time on so I might log a little bit more time um, on one section as opposed to another um, the main aim here though is just to make sure that I stay on track and I'm not spending too much time in one area um, or if I am you know move on to the next and then come back to uh, other areas that I might have been unsure of and to kind of help me track that progress what I've got here is a um, a bar column which works on uh, the value that I enter in this uh, field so the plan is to um, leave it set to zero uh, which means it's I've not started the uh, specific topic, and uh, until I you know start it, and what I will do is I'll change it to fifty if I've gone through the topic once and maybe I need to go over it again or finish off something that I've been doing. So I'll I'd set that to uh, fifty, and then last of all one hundred is 
you know, I'm fully competent with that topic. I know what I'm doing. There's no issues there. I'm confident going into the lab exam that I'll be able to uh, configure or I'll work with anything uh, related to that topic. So just to kind of give you an overview of kind of how I'll do it. So let's say for instance, I spent maybe two hours on rooted, which is probably not going to be the case because it's straightforward. And then uh, let me just get that back up. So two hours on, on, on rooted. And then what I would do here is if I said, right, I'm, I'm fully aware and, and competent in this area, I'd simply enter the value 100. And we can see now that all the rest of the fields have changed to red because they have not started. And again, say for transparent, say for instance, I covered the topic and I felt like I needed to revisit it or, or complete something else. What I would do is I would set this to 50. So you can see there that it's, um, it's, it's not complete and that's going to stand out to myself so that I can I can go back to that and what I do is I would do the same all the way down until I've worked through each of the topics so that's how I'm going to track my progress and my time what I've also done is I've put useful links in this section uh, which focus on uh, well essentially what these are are my videos um, for each of the uh, topics that have been covered and um, I do plan on doing this uh, a video for each of the topics that I cover as well so if you're not subscribed to my channel and you're going through the CCI security uh, feel free to subscribe because I will be uploading videos for each of these sections as well and then what I've also done is I've created another tab um, and this is maybe probably a, a one time use or you know you might refer to this when you just want to check software versions but this is essentially the equipment list so you've got the virtual machine equipment list the physical um, equipment list and then you've got other so what I've done here is I've just kind of as I've been setting up my lab environment and you can see it's not complete yet because I'm still playing around with a few things and getting my lab up to scratch um, I'm kind of just ticking off uh, each of these uh, devices as I kind of put them into my lab environment um, or if say for instance here um, I know that the ASA 5512 I do have two of those uh, physical devices but I, I also have uh, an ASA image that's capable of uh, doing things such as uh, multi-context uh, and, and clustering as well so um, I know that these devices are probably going to be used or should be used for that um, so I've, I've just put here one one uh, one times so I've got you know a pair of physical and I also have uh, virtual as well so anything that I don't have so say for instance DNAC uh, or DNA center is um, is a hard one to get hold of. Uh, we do have virtual appliances available now, but the resources are ridiculous. Um, so I will not be putting that in my lab. I will probably l be looking to uh, other resources for me to be able to get hands on and at least just get a, a little bit more familiar. If you remember, I recalled the, um, if, if you recall, sorry, I pointed out the learning matrix uh, on the Cisco website. What I've done here is I've just got that and put that into uh, my Excel sheet just so it's all together. Um, this is what it looks like. You know, you've got each section as I've broke it down on, on, on my tracker as well. So you see 1.1 here um, and then you've got the 1.1 here. And what you can see is you've got configuration uh, links to configuration guides. Uh, you've got Cisco live sessions that look at these uh, specific topics. And you also have books um, that will help you with all these topics. So um, really good, really useful tool. And um, you know I'll be definitely clicking on some of these links um, so that I can uh, be, get more familiar with each of these uh, sections. And last of all, what I've done is a, 
I've just input my topology essentially, which I'm building out at the moment. So um, this is my environment at the minute. It's probably going to change as we uh, go through the content, uh, but this is our setup for now. So you can see I've got a pair of virtual FTDs. We've got two ASAs here uh, where I can do, um, you know, HA and, and stuff on that. I've got a nested virtual environment of uh, EVNG as well as CML2. So I have the ability to, uh, you know, use uh, a virtual environment within a virtual environment uh, to, uh, you know, spin up quick labs if you like and, and tear those down without modifying the. Um, the, the virtual instance that I have here which is a more kind of permanent thing um, I have a access to a my physical side of the lab so I've got access points I've got wireless LAN controllers uh, laptops and, and physical switches etc so that'll allow me to do things such as authentication um, it'll allow me to do things like maxsec trussec uh, things like that as well so um, I've got that there um, I've got a next gen IPS or what will be a, a next generation IPS um, as part of the it's on the equipment list so I've just put one in there uh, and I've put a few devices behind there as well and uh, then I've got a standalone FTD I've got a CSR and then I've kind of got like a, a management network if you like where I've got um, virtual appliances of umbrella uh, I've got ice in there um, well I split across actually two two VLANs I've got the stealth watch management center uh, the, the floor collector WSAs ESAs so I've got enough in there I think what I'm trying to do as I said is try to build it out um, to ensure that I have everything required um, on the equipment list so I've got enough in there for me to uh, go off so so that's my plan um, that's what I've put together in preparation of my CCI security version 6 I'm hoping as I say I can pass it on the first attempt um, which I'm looking to do again around February 2022 um, there is also the CCIE security group that I set up on WebEx Teams. So if you're not a part of that, feel free to join. There's probably over 300 members now. I will put the link in the uh, description of this video. Um, if you've got any questions on anything that I've done, please feel free to reach out. And again, um, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and, and subscribe because um, I will be putting all the CCIE related videos um, in in this section here. So I do look out for that. And as I say, there's already some videos in here as well, which touch on the blueprint as well.